In this video, we're going to talk about cycloalkane naming. And so a cycloalkane is really just an alkane in a ring or cyclic structure. And it has the chemical formula CnH2n. So what you'll notice is that we always have twice as many hydrogens as carbons. And I'll show you why that is. So if we have this five carbon ring structure, each blue dot is a carbon atom. And then every carbon atom has two hydrogens bonded to it. So this five carbon structure has 10 hydrogens because every single carbon has two hydrogens bonded to it. Now we'll see that even with a uh, four carbon structure, cyclic structure, so we have four carbons, each carbon has two hydrogens. And we see that there's four carbons and eight hydrogens. So every carbon is bonded to two other carbons. So every carbon in a cycloalkane is a secondary carbon because two out of the four bonds that each carbon has are, uh, are bonded to another carbon. And every single carbon has two hydrogens. So this formula always works for plain, simple cycloalkanes. And so we're talking about the naming in this video. So the name for these kinds of structures is going to be exactly the same as unbranched alkanes. There's a previous video I have on that. But we had the prefix cyclo before the alkane name. So let's look at some examples. Three carbon is the smallest ring we can have. We can't have a two carbon ring. And so we have C3H6 as the formula for this cycloalkane. And if we had an unbranched alkane of three carbons, we would call it propane. A-N-E because it only contains single bonds, prop because it's three carbon, and now we're adding the prefix cyclo because this three carbon structure is cyclic. It's a ring structure. Our four carbon ring we saw before. It's a square. Four carbons, one at each corner. C4H4 four times two is eight. Cyclo Four carbon unbranched alkane is butane. Five carbon. C5H10. Five carbon structures are called pentane. This is a cyclopentane because it's in a ring structure. 6 carbon, we have a hexagon, or something that's supposed to be a hexagon, and we have 6 carbons, C6H12, ring, so we know cyclohexane, cyclohexane, because it's a ring structure containing 6 carbons, and of course 7 carbon, cycloheptane, hept is the uh, prefix for seven, eight carbon, cyclooctane. So you kind of get the picture here. So that's the naming scheme for plain cycloalkanes with no substituents. But what if we have branches or other atoms? Well, things get a little more complicated. So there's two real other realms of possibility. We can have a ring plus a substituent, or we can have a ring that is 
the substituent. So when the ring is the substituent, that means the ring has fewer carbons than the parent chain. If we have a ring plus a substituent, that's going to look like something like this. So we have here cyclopentane, and then coming off one of the carbon atoms, we have a two carbon substituent. So how do we name this? Well, since the ring contains more carbons than the substituent, the ring is going to be treated as the alkane, and the side chain is going to be treated as an alkyl group because of the fewer number of carbons. So we have a cyclopentane, and this is uh, two carbons as an alkyl group, so that's going to have the prefix F, and then it's an alkyl side chain, so we follow that up with YL to indicate that it's a uh, an alkyl side group. It would be ethane if it was treated as an alkane, but we're treating it as, a, as an alkyl side group. So this is called ethyl cyclopentane. Let's look at another example of a ring plus a substituent. So here, here we have a six carbon ring, and on this carbon we have two methyl groups, and on this carbon we have an ethyl group. Two methyl, one ethyl. So there's a couple of added complexities with this one. First of all, we have to indicate the numbering, so we have to do use the proper numbering, and then we have to list the substituent groups in the correct order, and that's done alphabetically. So ethyl will come first, because it starts with E, and methyl will be second, because M comes after E in the alphabet. And then as, our num as far as our numbering goes, we have two substituents on this carbon. So the number of that carbon is going to show up twice in our IUPAC name for this compound. So we'll start numbering at this carbon. So we can go to the right, one, two, three, or to the left, that's counterclockwise, and have one and five. Well, part of the IUPAC naming is that we want to have the uh, lowest possible numbers. So this is a matter of the direction of the numbering, and the rule we look to for this is the is called the first point of difference rule. And so when we are trying to figure out which direction to go, we know that we're starting with one at this carbon. Our point of difference would be when we uh, get to this ethyl group. And so three or five. Three is lower, so we're going to number clockwise. We want to have the lowest possible numbers. So we're going to go with the purple numbering system, and we're going to list the ethyl group first because it's alphabetical. Even though it has the higher number, three versus one, it's alphabetical. So three ethyl one one, we have two methyl groups at the first carbon. So we say one one di methyl cyclo hexane. So 3 ethyl, the third carbon has an ethyl group attached to it. We have two methyl groups, so that's dimethyl, and the locations are both 1, so we have 1 comma 1 dimethyl. Cyclo, it's a ring structure. Hexane, it contains 6 carbons. And then we have the YL ending for all of our alkyl groups, and A and E for the ending of our rings, because both of these structures are a ring plus a substituent. The ring is not the substituent, because the ring has more carbons in it than the substituent alkyl group. Okay, but now let's look at an example of when the ring is the substituent. 
So here we have a cyclobutane, four carbons, and we have this chain that has one, two, three, four, five carbons. The five carbon chain takes priority over the cyclic ring because the ring only has four carbons. So pentane, not pentyl, cyclobutyl. Notice that the compound is named as the alkane, and the ring is the alkyl substituent, so we add YL to the end. These side chains are treated as the alkyl groups, so they have the YL endings, because they're shorter than the ring in terms of the number of carbons. Here on the right side, our ring is four carbons, and our uh, parent chain is five carbons. The chain takes precedence over the ring because it has uh, more carbons in it. So count the carbons, otherwise you'll be naming them uh, backwards. You really want to make it clear when you're naming these compounds if the ring is treated as the alkane, the main group, or as an alkyl substitu uh, cycloalkyl substituent. The difference is key so that when you're naming, you want to be able to go from name to structure and structure to name without any ambiguities.